This is One Sentence News, a daily podcast featuring three news stories with a sentence-long summary and one sentence of context apiece. I'm Colin Wright. This is a sponsored message. I've been using Anchor as my podcast host for a while now, and it's been a pleasure to use. Anchor offers benefits that most other hosts do not. It's free to use, but it also has a collection of tools that allow you to create a podcast completely within the Anchor website or smartphone app. They distribute your show to Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and all the other distribution channels without any additional effort on your part, and you can make money from your podcast without any minimum audience size. So you can use it as a more traditional podcast host like I do, but it's also got everything you need to start a podcast from scratch. If you're keen to give it a shot, download the free Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started. It's Thursday, September 1st, 2022. Let's talk about the news. From BBC News, Solomon Islands halts naval visits after U.S. and U.K. ships denied entry. The government of the Solomon Islands has announced a temporary halt on all naval visits to their ports after denying U.S. and U.K. ships permission to dock and refuel earlier in August. This is news mostly because the Solomon Islands signed a security pact with China in April, which has raised hackles in the West over concerns that the Chinese military might be setting up the Solomons as a pseudo-military base in the Pacific, which is something the West would prefer to do themselves, as a counter to Chinese influence in the region. The Prime Minister of the Solomons has said that these entry denials were the consequence of delayed paperwork, not a policy shift in favor of China, and that impending new naval vessel-related policies and protocols would apply to everyone. From Reuters, Iraqi cleric Sadr calls off protests after worst Baghdad violence in years. Violent protests by supporters of the cleric and politician Maqtada al-Sadr in Baghdad have eased following an announcement by al-Sadr in which he called for an end to the violence in the wake of the killing of at least 22 people in clashes throughout the city. This is an ongoing story, but in essence, the Iraqi government has been at a standstill for a while, as no group has been able to achieve a big enough majority to form a functioning government. Al-Sadr represents one religious and political faction, and he quit parliament in protest over that stasis recently, which led to protests and his followers occupying government buildings several times in the past few weeks. This new wave of protests were sparked by Al-Sadr's announcement that he would be leaving politics for good because the corrupt government system was unsalvageable. The current president of Iraq has welcomed al-Sadr's peace request, but he also warned that the violence wasn't over and that the political stalemate would probably continue to catalyze these sorts of problems. And from the New York Times, U.S. life expectancy falls again in historic setback. New data shows that the average American life expectancy has fallen sharply over the past few years, dropping to 76 in 2021 from about 79 in 2019. That's the most dramatic decrease in not quite 100 years, and although most countries have seen similar declines over the course of the COVID-19 pandemic, and this decrease is attributable almost completely to COVID itself and secondary consequences of COVID, Most other countries have begun to see their numbers creep back up, while data in the U.S. shows a continued fall so far. If you're finding some value in One Sentence News, consider leaving a quick review wherever you get your podcasts and or sharing the show with a friend. You can find out more about this show or subscribe to the email version at onesentencenews.com. And you can support this and other related projects, like the Let's Know Things and Brain Lenses podcasts, at understandery.com.